Hi, Green Locavores Dilemma Watchers. Thanks for joining me. I wanted to try something different this week. I'm going to do sort of a book summary, book review. I wanted to get you guys some really good information about greenwashing. I read a wonderful book called Greenwashed, Why We Can't Buy Our Way to a Greener Planet, and I wanted to share it. I'm going to do this as a series because there's a lot of information to come out. So I'm going to try to cover two myths in each episode, and uh, here we go. So myth number one is the idea that you can actually go to the mall and buy green clothing. A lot of these brands now like Gap and H&M and Forever 21, they have sustainable fashion lines and they are using organic cotton, which might be good because it's less pesticides, but it's really not green or good for the planet. You see, organic cotton, though it uses less pesticides, uses immense amounts of underground water reserves that are finite resources. The other thing is that cheap clothing is made often to only be able to be worn like three or four times and then tossed away. It's made cheaply overseas and will fall apart. So some solutions to this problem. Use your clothes as long as you can. Repair them when they break. I recommend checking out Patagonia's Common Threads initiative. They will repair your clothes within 10 business days. Really cool. They also, Patagonia, I don't work for them or anything, full disclosure, but they make clothes that last. So if I'm going to buy something new, that's usually who I go with. But I highly recommend getting your clothes used at a thrift store, which is cheap and really fun. Also, if you can avoid money altogether and you live in a forward area, you can probably find a clothing swap near you. And if you don't have any clothes to swap, you can often volunteer your time and get free clothes. All right, guys, myth number two. The organic locavore lifestyle can fix climate change. Now, when I learned about this, I was a little bummed out. I'm the green locavore's dilemma, I believe, in local food. But the truth of the matter is that even though it's good for the local economy, farmers' lives, our health, the health of the planet, food transportation is only 4% of the carbon emissions that the world releases per year. If you don't live in California, food shipped from far away may be more energy efficient than food grown in a heated greenhouse. The real problem here with food is our food waste. On average, 40% of food produced in the US is thrown out. 42% of that is just rotting in your fridge right now in consumers' fridges, getting thrown away. The rest is simply expiring on store shelves and then getting thrown away. And then, as it decomposes and rots in the landfill, it releases carbon and methane. So that is the real problem with food that we need to fix. So, solutions for this problem. We really need to reduce our food waste. That is the greenest thing that we can do. So, how do we do that? We cook food that we bring home instead of eating out. Uh, We make a pot of soup when all our veggies are about to go bad. You could also throw them in the juicer if they're, you know, that would work for you. And don't be afraid to eat food that has blemishes or insect bites on it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of these green washing myths.